Hello friends, this video on solid states part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about the number of atoms in a unit cell. So we have seen that the primitive unit cells are the one which has atoms only in the corners. Right? So we'll discuss about the number of atoms for the primitive unit cells, centered unit cells, and centered we have three types. We'll discuss the number of atoms for all these things. Let's start with the primitive. So in the primitive, what we have seen, the atoms are there only on the corners, right? Atoms or molecules or ions, depending on the structure we're looking for, or the constituent particles. Now, they are only at the corners. So if you see, this is my first structure. This is called open structure. So this structure is just to understand. But if you see, this particular atom will be shared by eight other lattice, uh, eight other unit cells because there will be one unit cell here and two more in the front and three more, four more in the up. Correct? Example. This is my lattice. Correct. So I can have one here. Correct. And I can have two more here on the front. And then I can have similarly the four on the top. So four on the top, one here, and two in the front. So that way they are totally this particular one which I am talking about is shared by 8. So if you see this has only 1 by 8 contribution. So 1 by 8 of the sphere will be part of this unit cell. Correct. So this structure is more of an open structure just to understand but this is not the actual structure because actually when you talk about two atoms or two molecules they are almost touching each other. They almost touch. Right. In fact there is an overlap. There is overlap because it's all electron clouds we have discussed in quantum. This is just a representation. This is not the actual representation. This is not how a uh, uh, unit cell will look like when you see a real, let's suppose, sodium chloride, a real crystal using X-ray diffraction. So in that case, everything will be overlapping. It will be overlapping. It won't be a spherical shape also. It is just to understand. This is my just open structure, not actual structure. This is uh, more, it depicts a space filling representation, right? Because if you see here, it actually shows that this is same, this is same, but with this, you're not able to make out how it is, right? So this is more to understand uh, how it is arranged, but this is actually, it tells, okay, you know, these atoms are all uh, touching each other. And this is how the space are filled. This is more of a space filling structure. Correct. And this is the actual portion of unit cell because this unit cell, if you see this particular example uh, atom I'm talking about, this is shared by eight other unit cells. I just showed you this is one unit cell. There will be one unit cell here, two in the front and four in the top. So this particular atom will be shared by eight unit cells. So per contribution is one by eight and one by eight of the sphere is shown here. This is the actual portion of the unit cell. Now if you see in this, there are how many cells or how many atoms? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here also 8, right? So there are 8 atoms. But per atom contribution is how much? 1 by 8. Correct? Because per atom is shared with eight other unit cells. So this is I'm talking about for a unit cell. For a unit cell, number of atoms is equal to total number of atoms eight and per atom is shared by eight. So it is one by eight, right? Because if you see one by eight of the sphere is only here. So you see one by eight into eight, total is how much one. So there is only one atom actually 
in this unit cell. This is nothing but one atom. Looks weird, right? So if you visualize it clearly, if you think a little bit, you'll see that this is nothing but one atom. So what we have done is we broke this one atom into eight part and you just stick it in the eight different corners. You'll get this figure. You can try this with uh, one spherical, uh, I mean fruit, one spherical fruit you can take in the uh, spherical potato and try that. So this is how it is. The next is my body center. So let's see how many atoms are there in the body center. Here also the first figure if you see is the open structure. Why this is just to show how it looks. The next is more of a space filling structure. So in this you see again here if you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 atoms here also you will see 9 atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 sorry or one is hidden actually that's why we we do the structure so that you can see actually uh, you can visualize it so there is one um, extra atom which is hidden not seen so there are nine atoms but out of these nine atoms are all these nine atoms contributing totally to this unit cell no so let's draw the actual uh, contribution so this is uh, unit cell portion actual belonging to it right so this is unit cell portion. So now in this if you see all these corner atoms they are shared by eight other atoms eight other unit cells similar to the last one I we have seen. So their contribution will be what they are eight into one by eight and this one in the center the body center is totally owned by this unit cell nobody is sharing this plus one so total is two. So there are two atoms in this unit cell. So there are two atoms per unit cell. Unit cell in case of body centered closed by. Hope you understood why. So in case of the normal cubic packing, we saw that there were eight atoms in the corner and each atom is contributed one by eight to this unit cell. So the total contribution was only one. Only one atom per unit cell. In this case, there is also one atom in the center of the body and that is not shared by anyone. So total is 8 into 1 by 8, this is this 1 by 8, 1 by 8 add you to 1 is hidden which is not seen and 1 in the center you added, you get 2 atoms per unit cell. Correct. The next is face center. So face centered also if you see this is my open structure, this is more to visualize how it looks, right. And the next is the space filling structure. So if you see here, you can see all the atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. In this, you want to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Two are hidden. And that's why we have this open structure just to make you understand how it looks. This is the space filling structure. But here, we want to know how many atoms are there actually in a particular unit cell. So this is nothing but a structure which depicts the unit cell portion unit cell portion belonging of of atoms belonging to it actually okay so now if you see in this case these these ones the one on the corners are shared by eight right they are one two three four five six seven there are eight such atoms shared by eight one by eight done plus now they are one two three four five six on the face but each of these is shared by two. If you see, I have just drawn the half. Half is not even drawn just for simplicity, right? So each is shared by two. So one by two. You add this, you get one plus three, four. That is, it has four atoms in a unit cell. So there's a difference in the first case, the cubic one, there was only one atom in the unit cell. The body center, there were two atoms in the unit cell. And in this kind of packing, they are able to manage four atoms in a unit cell. Correct. The next is end centered. So in end centered also we have same thing. So this is again I'll just uh, make it clearly. So in this case the number of atoms in unit cell will be watched. 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 on the corners. Each contributing 1 by 8 plus 2 on the face 
and each contributing 1 by 2. So if you see this is nothing but a half sphere, total is how much? 1 plus 1 that is 2. So there are two atoms in a unit cell in case of n centered. Please remember this is pretty critical for uh, solving numericals. In case of normal uh, cubes, we have only one atom per unit cell. In case of body centered, two atoms per unit cell. In case of face centered, four atoms per unit cell. In case of end center, two atoms per unit cell. You don't need to remember. Actually, if you remember the figure, you can very well calculate on the spot in seconds. You don't need to remember things. Just remember the figure. Remember the figure. I think the, the video must have made your concepts clear. If you remember that, you can just ca uh, calculate the number on the spot. Let's take some numerical now. So the question is, what is the significance of lattice point? So if you see, I took a unit cell. So lattice point, each lattice point represents constituent particles. These are all lattice points, right? So each lattice point is nothing but it represents my constituent particles. And my constituent particles can be what? It can be atom, it can be ions, it can be molecules. Correct. The next question is, name the parameter that characterize unit cells. So I told that a unit cell has parameter A, B and C, that is the length of the edges and alpha, beta, gamma, that is the angle. So these are the one which actually characterize the unit cell, the shape of the unit cell. And then we have different kind of packing, that is different all, things altogether. But based on A, B, C and alpha, beta, gamma, we have seven different kinds of unit cell. Monoclinic, hexagonal, we have seen that. Right, tetrahedral. So that is my parameters which characterize a unit cell. The next is we will distinguish between hexagonal and monoclinic unit cell. So let's, let's first draw hexagonal and monoclinic unit cell. Correct. This is my hexagonal. This is monoclinic. So in monoclinic, if you see, my all the sides are mentioned. That is, all the sides, none of the sides are equal. A is not equal to B is not equal to C. Correct. Talk about angle. We know that. Alpha and beta is 90 degree, two angles are 90 degree and gamma I am not very sure. Gamma is something I am not very sure. It is not equal to 120 degree for sure. It can be any angle but not 120 degree. But in case of hexagonal, the pink one is the actual hexagonal actually. The pink one is the hexagonal. Here we have a lot of restrictions. Right? The restrictions are because it has to form this kind of hexagon structure. There, there are restrictions. So here A is equal to B but not C. So two sides are equal and this is also you can say this is side B but both are equal A is equal to B. And about the angle they say that alpha is equal to beta is equal to 90 and gamma is equal to 120 degree. So this is the difference. So if you see in both case alpha and beta angle are 90 degree. Right? In case in this case, gamma is equal to 120 degree. In this case, we see that gamma can be anything but not 180. Correct. And what about the sides? In monoclinic, all the sides are unequal. In hexagon, two sides are equal. And the next question was difference between face centered and end centered. So we have this two diagram. This is my face centered and this is my end centered. Correct. So if you see the face centered, you have atoms in all the face. And you have how many atoms per uh, unit cell? We have calculated uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 into 1 by 2, that is 3, plus 1, 4. So we have 4 atoms per unit cell. Here you have 1 plus 1, 2 atoms per unit cell. Correct? So that is the difference. The question is how much portion of an atom located at the corner and the body center of a cubic unit cell is? part of its neighboring cell. So this is my body centered one. The question is, this is shared by how many? We have discussed that this is shared by eight and this is shared by the, the one in the center centered by how many? None, only by a single. So for this, the contribution is one by eight, the one in the corners, right? The actual contribution is only one by eight. And for the bodies, the one in the center, the actual contribution is one, full contribution. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.